And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, a story of devotion in which a woman risks her life in order that her husband might be spared. It's called The Tip. Our star, Miss Lorreen Tuttle. Thanks for driving me to the station, dear. A pleasure, darling. Yeah, you really shouldn't have. Now, let's not start that again. But the doctor told you to take it easy. He didn't tell me to hibernate. My heart isn't that bad. We'll be together for a long time yet. Thank God for that, Elaine. I thank him daily. Here comes your train. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll be home as soon as I can. Call me when you get here and I'll pick you up. All right, if you must. Oh, just a minute, mister. What? Won't you tip the cabbie? Oh, of course. Here you are. Thank you. Eighth floor, Mrs. Stratton. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Come in and shut the door. Sit down and be quiet. That's better. Just do as you're told, and there won't be any need for this gun to frighten you. Who, who are you? I was about to ask you that. I'm Elaine Stratton. Mrs.? Yes? Funny, I never thought of him as married. Who? Mr. Stratton, your husband. Where is he? On his way to work. I just drove him to the station. I guess I missed him. Hope you don't mind if I wait. What do you want with him? What do I want with him? I want to kill him. What? What did you say? Oh, why? What did he do to he you? He ruined me. My husband? Yes. But that's absurd. Not to me. I had my own business. A wife, two little girls. They're gone now. Everything gone. Since Mr. Stratton came into the picture. Well, how could he He have... put me out of business. Broke up my home. Well, however it happened, I'm sure he'll straighten it out. If it's money you need... He's had his chance. Only a week ago, I begged him to help me. But I, I'd had money then. My wife would have stayed. I told him that. He showed me out. Well, maybe he didn't understand how serious... He'll understand now. Well, I'll help you. I'll make out a check right now. Sure, and call the police as soon as I accept it. Well, I swear... It's no use, Mrs. Stratton. I'm going to be here when your husband comes home, and you might as well get used to the idea there's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. if I just talk, you'll understand. All right, I know you hate him. I know you don't care if you're hung for killing him. I care, though. I love him. George and I, we grew up together. I know him better than you ever could. We went to school together. If I speak to him, I'm sure I can get him to do something if he was unfair to you. It, it... If you kill him, you might as well kill me, too. I'd be lost without him. Try to understand. Whatever you can get by murder, you can do better otherwise. There won't be any need for revenge. I promise you I won't call the police if you give us this one chance. I promise. I promise. I promise. I don't hear a word. Listen, lady, it's 12.30 now. You've been at it for two and a half hours. You can't possibly keep it up until your husband gets home. You won't listen. That should be obvious. Listen. That should be obvious. It is. It certainly is. Good. Maybe you'll be quiet. Quiet? You expect me to sit here and calmly wait to see my husband shot by a madman? What else can you do? Well, I can call the police. And I can stop you. You can try. Get away from that phone. Go ahead, fire don't point that gun. Use it. Put that down. I said put it down. Get away. Get away. Oh, oh. I'll try it again. I'll 
keep trying and trying. Not with the wires ripped out, you won't. One, two. All right. Now you can play with the phone all you want to. What's the matter? Not interested anymore? Why didn't you shoot me? It wasn't necessary. Is that the reason? Or were you afraid to? Don't get any wrong ideas. The noise might attract attention, isn't that it? It might. Then for all your threats, you wouldn't use it. Not until I had to. Well, you have to. Right now. No. All I have to do is tie you up, gag you, until your husband comes home. Would you rather be tied up? Well, who's that? I don't know. Expecting anyone? I ordered some groceries on the way home this morning. Could be the delivery boy. All right. Here's your chance to hear the gun go off. One wrong word out of you and I'll fire. But not only at you, at the delivery boy, too. You wouldn't dare. Try me, then. I'll kill both of you, whoever it is. If you say a wrong word, I'll kill both of you. You may involve an innocent party in your problems if you wish. The choice is yours. Go ahead. Open the door. Uh, good afternoon, madam. I represent the Better Products Company, and I wonder oh. if... Oh. Oh, come right in. Why, thank you, madam. Oh, man of the house? No. Uh, just a friend. Oh, I see. Well, now... We're kind of busy I... right now. Maybe you'd better come back later. Oh, not that busy. He may have something I need. Oh, I'm sure I have. Of course, I don't mean to intrude, but if you'll just take a moment, the Better Products Company, by way of introduction, is letting you have at no obligation to you one of these three items. We're busy. Please. These are free, is that right? Uh, that's right, madam. Absolutely free at no obligation to you. Now, first, there's this handy little cuticle pusher. Second, this dandy plastic cover. Fits over any dish. And third, this beautifully carved letter opener. Take your choice, madam. I think I'll... Uh... Take the letter opener. A perfect choice. Yes, these are very popular. Now, if you'd care to look through this catalog, I'm sure you'll find many useful household products which you may want to order. On this page, for example, we have many specials. And this is the last day. You can save up to 30% by ordering now. I do need some of these items. Another time. Oh, I deprive the lady, sir. Of course, I didn't intend to intrude. This but, way. Uh, uh, wait, uh, my, my sample case. Uh, well, well, goodbye. I'll come back some other time. I didn't like that. I don't like you. Don't try anything like that again. Stay away from don't me. Don't try anything like that again, or I... I'll say stay away. Away! Oh! Why, you... Oh! Now, drop that letter opener. Take it from me. I don't want to fire this thing, but I will. Drop that letter opener. Drop it! That's better. Now lead the way to your medicine cabinet. You're going to bind this cut for me. No. I said... No. I'm not fooling, Mrs. Stratton. Ow! Oh! This way. Oh. That hurt. I'm glad. There. Thanks. What's that bottle you take? My pills. You look healthy to me. They're for my heart. Oh, that's too bad. You shouldn't excite yourself. Good advice. Where are you going? I'm following your advice. I'm going into the kitchen. I intend to calmly take my pills and calmly drink a cup of coffee. I'll go along. I was sure you would. And brew an extra cup for me. Here's your coffee. Sugar. I'll get it. Here it is. It's hot. I like it hot. Glad to please. Drink yours. Not at the same table, thank you. It's a little too chummy. I'll have mine over here. Suit yourself. I hope you don't mind if I turn my chair around, though. I don't like to have my back to you. Your manners, I'm sure. That's right, my manners. What time is it? Look at the clock. You're blocking it. 
How's that? Better. What time is it? Look at the clock. My back is to it. 2.10. Maybe that's your delivery boy. Maybe. Go ahead, answer it. But don't forget, what I said before still goes. The choice is yours. A wrong word, and I'll kill whoever's at the door. I know. Elmwood 89325, George Stratton? Yes? I'm from the telephone company. An operator's report said they couldn't get through to you. May I look at your telephone? Of course. Come in. Someone's been trying to reach you, I guess, and reported. Say, how'd this happen? Accident. Accident? I tripped over the rug and grabbed the phone as I went down. The wires ripped out. Well, it must have been quite a fall. It was. Is that how you hurt your hand? Yeah. I will have to reconnect those wires. It'll take long. No. I'm sorry you have to go through the trouble. Well, that's my job. Do you get many uh, ripped wires? Oh, I imagine accidents happen. Oh, well, not this kind. The only ripped wire job I ever had, and I'm working for the company for a long time. A friend of mine did, though. He went to the apartment and fixed it. Was it an accident? Well, that's what the guy said. My friend found a guy and a gal in there when he read the papers the next day, found out the gal had been murdered. And I guess it wasn't an accident. No. Came out in court later. The guy had ripped the wires out. He could almost be the same here, couldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it could. Imagine if you read the papers tomorrow and find out Mrs. Stratton is murdered. Hmm? <laughs> that sure would be a coincidence, wouldn't it? Uh, oh, there. That wasn't bad. I'll just test it. Balzac here. Elmwood, 89325. Yeah. Right, thanks. All set. No trouble now. That party will be able to reach you. Thank you. Now, you have your telephone in working order. Uh, silent at last. Or are you only sleepy? Sleepy? No, no, I'm not. You look sleepy. No, I can't be. The, the pill. There's your party. Oh, yes. Shall I answer it for you? Uh, no, no, one will. I'll take it. Hello? Oh, Mr. Street. You were? Well, my telephone was out of order. That's all right. Those things happen. How late? Oh, fine. I, I didn't plan to use them today. Thank you. Who was that? My grocer. He was rushed, so he couldn't make up my order. He's doing it now. Does the delivery do soon? I don't know. You look tired, Mrs. Stratton. No. I've got to stop you. Can't blame you for trying. Why are you grinning at me like that? Are you sleepy, Mrs. Stratton? No, no. It's, it's just it's hot in here. You look very tired. I'm not. <laughs> and you are sleepy. You, your coffee. I put pills in it. My sleeping pills. You fall asleep soon, and I'll, I'll call the police. I switched the cups when you went for the sugar. Oh, no. Why don't you stretch out on the couch? I mustn't sleep. I mustn't. You can't stay awake long. I, I've got to wait. George. George will be here. What a shame, Mrs. Stratton, to wake up and find your husband dead. Suffy is Suffy in here. Oh, the window. Certainly. Go ahead and open it, Mrs. Stratton. I'll clear my head. You'll sleep. I'll call the police. Call for Sleep well, Mrs. Stratton. You 
You are listening to Miss Lorene Tuttle in Carl Abram's story, The Tip. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Later this evening on most of these same stations, John Lund makes his latest tour de force as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dollar wades in when fraud, murder, and double-cross dovetail neatly with the reappearance of a long-missing painting. Listen for the flowering Judas matter involving yours truly, Johnny Dollar, up to his neck in trouble later this evening. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Miss Lorene Tuttle in Elliot Lewis's production of The Tip, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Hmm. Oh. Oh, sleepy. I was sleepy. <laughs> it was a dream. A nightmare. <laughs> I'm afraid not, Mrs. Stratton. You? That's right. It wasn't a dream. How long did I sleep? Long enough. It's 5.30. No! Well, he must be due home soon. No! He's not coming home. I he I, I forgot to tell you. He gets he... through about this time. I guess it takes an hour to get there. I've got to get help. Stay away from that door. I won't let you kill him. Oh, wait. Oh, stop. Maybe this will convince you. You're joking. You'll do as I tell you. Let go. Let go. <laughs> <laughs> Should have tied and gagged you while you were sleeping. Why didn't you? Because it's more interesting this way. You are a madman. No, just a little bored with a full day of waiting. Bored with murder? No murder has been committed yet, Mrs. Stratton. I'm sure things will be more exciting when your husband comes home. I won't let you. I won't. Won't you? I don't think you can stop me. What have you done so far? You tried to drug me, a kid stunt, so it backfired. Worst of all, you've been trying to stop me with brawn. That might be brave, but let's face it, I'm stronger. All you've done is to earn yourself a few slaps and a throttling. You won't get away with it. Stop repeating yourself. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> that's better. You see, I already have you taking my commands. But that's to be expected. You're a woman. Women are emotional. And you're a man. A big, brave murderer who knows how to slap a woman. It's natural for me to take advantage of my strength in this situation. And your superior cunning, no doubt. Oh, I imagine you're just as smart, but not in this kind of setup. As I said, <laughs> women are emotional. They can't think on a tight spot. I suppose there's a moral to this little sermon. Simple. Use your good sense and be still. And if I refuse? That's probably your delivery. Open the door. And shall I read? I know. Not a word. That's right. No use dragging the delivery boy into this. Good evening, Mrs. Stratton. Michael, hello. I'm sorry this is so late. On top of everything, I forgot your bundle on my last rum. Had to go back for it. Well, that's all right. Shall I bring it in for you? No need to. Doctor, will you take this for me, please? Uh, sure. Right here, son. There you are, Doctor. Uh, one moment, Michael. I'll get some change. Don't bother. I have some. Here. Half a buck. Thanks, Doc. Five after six. Pretty soon now. You don't know what you're doing. Not much, I don't... Another five minutes. Ten after. You can't do it! You can't! Please! He should be here in about 15 minutes. Kill me instead! Kill me! No! Open it! I won't! Open it! No! Please! No! Good evening, madam. I thought I'd stop back. You said you might want to make an order before. I told you and... another time. Oh, you're still here. <laughs> Sorry, I had hoped you were gone. I didn't mean to intrude again, Good but... Good Stubborn, isn't he? Yeah. He's stubborn. He's stubborn. Come on 
on, Mrs. Stratton. Come on. You don't want to miss the fun, do you? Here, have a cigarette. We'll calm your nerves. I don't. Thank you. Line. <coughs> <laughs> Doesn't look like you ever smoked before. I smoked. I used to. I'm, I'm not accustomed to it anymore. Oh. Now drag deep, Mrs. Stratton. We've only got about ten minutes left. Number. Isn't this Evergreen 35964? No. You sure? Positive. Well, you sure sound like Millie. I'm not Millie, whoever that is. Okay, I'm sorry. Goodbye. But you sure sound like... Goodbye. Annoying at a time like this, isn't it? What do you think? I think... Hey, don't you smell something funny? No. Something burning? I don't smell anything. Well, I do. What'd you do with your cigarette? My cigarette? I did it's smoking. Well... Threw your lit cigarette on the couch, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, there's nothing like a fire to attract attention. Oh, right, you are. Move. What, what are you going to do? Put your little campfire out. But first, I've got to be sure you're safely out of the way. Move. No, but, but this isn't the way out. I know, right here. Into the closet. No, I won't. Get in there. you out if I can get that fire you started under control. If not, too bad. <laughs> let me out. Please, 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 let me out. <laughs> Beast. Is that nice? After I rescued you. Beast, please. Don't get hysterical, Mrs. Stratton. The fire is out. Raised more smoke when I poured water on it, though, than when it was burning. I hope it didn't frighten you. I could kill you. Well, I guess I should have let it burn. If I had to go... Shut up. It's George. Come now, Mrs. Stratton. Your husband has a key of his own. Open the door and see who it is. And make sure you get rid of him fast. Mrs. Stratton, the neighbors, they say they uh, smell Smoke? Smoke? You better let me look around. Really, Mr. Raymond, there's no need. Oh, oh. what's this? Oh, that. It, it's all right now. A cigarette. Slip behind the cushions. I see. Well, it's all out now. Only took one pot of water. I see. Oh, is uh, Mr. Stratton home? Not yet. I see. You see too much. Well, I don't see anything. I see a lot, but I don't see anything. All right, you see. Now go. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, well, I, I suppose I'm in the way. No, Mr. Raymond, you're not in the way. In fact... Well, that's you... all right, Mrs. Stratton. I pride myself on not being naive. I understand how things happen. Just be careful not to set the building on fire, please. Uh, good night. What are you trying to do? What kind of ideas were you trying to put into his mind? They were already there. I can't help the way he thinks. That might be something, though. Husband slain in love nest. Quiet! All right. And my apologies if I seem rude. But don't try it again. Or I might use that alibi. My pills. Oh, please get me my pills. Get them yourself. Please. I told you. I wouldn't trust you alone for that long. I'll be still. Uh. Here, yeah, take it. Hello? Hi. George? I'm down at the station now. You still want to pick me up? Pick you up? I... Uh, Be careful. I'd love to. What's the matter? Matter? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. You're late. George! Did you get another attack? No. No, George. Hold on, darling. I'll take a taxi. No, George! No! No, don't come home. Don't come home, George. Don't. Don't come home. Don't. 
cab just pulled away. He's on his way up now. Let him talk to you. Give him that one chance. He'll die as he steps through that door. Oh, don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. I can hear him now. Oh, please, I beg you. Please. I'm not well. I'm not well. <laughs> run, George, run. Don't open the door. Run. 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 Well, Mrs. Stratton. It worked. She's dead. Took her long enough. I gave her a pretty hard time. I don't want to hear about it. Pretty smart idea you had. Yeah, yeah. I'll pay you off as soon as her insurance comes through. Sure. Anybody see you here? <laughs> Anybody see me? This place is like Grand Central. All right. Let's get our story straight, then. We were both here when it happened. You're an old friend. An old friend. You spent the day here. Right. Okay. I'll call the doctor. The doc? <laughs> I had her so scared she even called me her doctor. What? She was so scared she covered my being here by calling me her doctor. When the kid was here with the bundles, she said to me, take these for me, doctor. What kid? The delivery boy. Uh, Mike, I think his name was. Mike. Michael Court, that delivery boy is Dr. Court's son. What? Her doctor, the only doctor she's ever had. Mrs. Stratton. Mrs. Stratton. This is Dr. Court, Mrs. Stratton. Is anything wrong? Mrs. Stratton, open the door. Officer. Open the door. Open up. In the name of the law. Suspense, in which Lorene Tuttle was starred in The Tip. By 1960, our population will top 180 million. Every year, there are more families and bigger families creating new consumer needs, asking better roads and transportation, seeking new communities with more elbow space. The future of America can look very bright to you and your neighbors when you think of the new roads, new factories, new services, our increasing population demands. Have faith in the future of America. Next week, the story of a man who killed and a woman who helped him try to get away with it. It's called Run, Sheep, Run, and it will star Kathy and Elliot Lewis. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morovic and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The tip was written for Suspense by Carl Abrams. In tonight's story, Herb Butterfield was heard as the stranger and High Everback as George. Featured in the cast were Howard McNear, Jerry Hausner, Shep Mencken, Dick Beals, and Eddie Fields. And remember, next week, Morton Fine and David Friedkin's new play, Run, Sheep, Run, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis. America listens most to the CBS radio network.